retaliate uh, because some of their family members had been uh, unlawfully killed. Um, uh, and as far as whether to, uh, the offender did not expect to cause physical harm, the, the jury found that these were calculated killings. So and to, not only was, and of course part of the crime is purpose, purposeful killings. So not only did, was it anticipated that, that harm would be caused, but it was planned that harm would be caused, death would be caused. Um, and finally, there are substantial grounds, whether there are substantial grounds to mitigate the offender's uh, conduct. Um, and and there, there's no indication of that here. Uh, the defendant, of course, testified he, he wasn't there. Uh, but others, the, the uh, co-defendants testified that he was there and participated. And uh, certainly there was no effort made uh, to stop the crimes from taking place. Uh, in fact, by the, by the testimony of the co-defendants, the defendant here was a willful planner and willful participant in the crimes. The court is also to consider factors um, regarding the offender uh, uh, concerning whether, as indicating whether the defendant is likely to commit future crimes. Now, when you look at those, there's no indication of any prior, at least serious convictions of crime, no findings of delinquency. Those are set forth, those are some of the considerations. Um, there's no, no uh, indication of serious drug use, pattern of drug use or alcohol use here. Uh, but number five uh, on this part of the section is whether the offender shows any remorse for the offense. And the court quite frankly finds that the defendant has shown no remorse, um, just denial, in which the jury, of course, did not believe in rendering its verdict. Um, and finally, the court is to consider certain factors as indicating whether the offender uh, is not likely to commit uh, future crimes. And again, we have uh, whether he's been adjudicated, the, the offender has been adjudicated a delinquent child. That's not, we have no evidence of that. Whether he's uh, been convicted or, of or pled guilty to other uh, criminal offenses, and, uh, and there's no indication uh, of that. Uh, but the third says whether the offender has lived a law-abiding life for a significant number of years. And there's quite a bit of indication in the defendant's testimony himself that he did not live a law, he was not living a law-abiding life. There were several crimes uh, undetected and certainly unprosecuted uh, that he has acknowledged in his testimony that he had uh, uh, committed. Also, the, the, a consideration is whether the offense was committed under circumstances not likely to recur. Well, the court can't make a finding like that because the, the circumstances here involve family relationships, which if the defendant uh, went on with his life uh, in, out, out of prison, he undoubtedly would uh, develop other relationships with other people. And uh, whenever you have those type of relationships, family relationships, you have family disagreements, uh, <coughs> the old suspicions, the old disagreements, and maybe this way of settling those matters could reoccur. So the court can find these circumstances are not likely to uh, recur. The fifth finding here that the court is, or the factor is that the offender shows genuine remorse for the offense. And again, the court finds it no remorse uh, has been shown, uh, only denial. Um, and again, the jury did not believe the denial. Uh, the court's also to consider, as I indicated, military service where applicable, and that's not here. So the court's considered all of these factors that the court's required uh, to consider and is, and is ready to uh, impose sentence. So, Mr. Wagner, I'll ask you to stand at this point. On count one of the indictment for the offense of aggravated murder in violation of section 2903.01a of the revised code, the victim of that offense being Kenneth Roden, the court hereby sentences you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. 
upon count two of the indictment, the victim of the offense being uh, Chris Roden Sr. And again, the, the charge is aggravated murder, and I've given the section number. In fact, all of these first eight offenses involve the crime of aggravated murder set separate victims in violation of 2903.01a of the revised code. So on count two, the victim being Chris Roden, the court will sentence you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. On count three of the indictment, the victim of the offense of aggravated murder being Gary Roden, the court will also sentence you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. On count four of the indictment, for the aggravated murder of Clarence Franklin Roden, the court will sentence you to serve a, a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. On count five of the indictment, the victim of the offense being uh, Hannah Hazel Gilly, the crime being aggravated murder, the court will sentence you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. Uh, on uh, count six of the indictment, um, for the aggravated murder of Dana Roden, the court will, will sentence you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. Uh, on count seven of the indictment, for the aggravated murder of Hannah Mae Roden, the court will sentence you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. And on count eight of the indictment, the victim of the offense being Christopher Roden Jr. for the offense of aggravated murder, the court will sentence you to serve a mandatory term of life imprisonment without parole. On count nine of the indictment, the offense uh, there that you were found guilty of is conspiracy, a first degree felony in violation of section 2923.01A1 and A2 and 2923.01J1. The court will sentence you to serve a uh, uh, definite term of eight years in prison. On count 10, for the offense of aggravated burglary, and this was at, one, at uh, 1084 Left Fork Road, in violation of section 2911.11A1 and 2911.11A2 and 2911.11B, a felony of the first degree, the court will sentence you to serve a prison term of eight years. On count 11, the charge is aggravated uh, burglary involving uh, the, the premises at uh, 4119 Union Hill Road. Again, the, uh, the, the section numbers are 2911.11A1 and A2 and 2911.11B. A felony of the first degree, the court will sentence you to serve a definite prison term of eight years. On count 12, for the offense of aggravated burglary, the section numbers are the same. This involves the premises of 4077 Union Hill Road, a felony of the first degree. The court will sentence you to serve a prison term of eight years. On count 13 for aggravated burglary at 3122 Union Hill Road, the uh, section numbers, of course, are the same. Felony of the first degree, the court will sentence you to serve a definite prison term of eight years. On count 14, unlawful possession of dangerous ordinance, 2923.17A1 of the revised code, a fifth degree felony. The court sentenced you to serve a prison term of 10 months. Count 15, tampering with evidence. This involves phones and cameras, 2921.12A1 and 2921.12B a felony of the third degree. The court will sentence you to serve a prison term of 24 months. Upon count uh, 16, tampering with evidence involving custody documents, the court will sentence you to serve a prison term of 24 months. And section numbers there are 2921.12A2 and 2921.12B. Again, it's a felony of the third degree. On count 17, for the offense of tampering with evidence uh, involving security, uh, home security system, uh, shell casings, and silencer, 2921.12A uh, and 2921.12B, the revised code of felony of the third degree, the court will sentence you to serve a definite term of 24 months. 
on count 18 for the offense of forgery, 2913.31A1 and A2, and 2913.31C1B. It's a felony in the fifth degree. The court will sentence you to serve a prison term of uh, 10 months. On count 19, an authorized use of property, 2913.04B and 2913.04G2. Uh, uh, That's a felony of the fifth degree. The court will sentence you to serve a prison term of 10 months. On count 20, uh, interception of wire, oral, or electronic communications, 2933.52A1 and 29. 33.52C, a felony of the fourth degree, the court will uh, sentence you to uh, serve a prison term of 12 months. On count uh, 21, obstructing justice, 2921.32A4 and, and, and A5 and 2921.32C3, a felony of the fifth degree, the court will sentence you to serve a prison term of 10 months. And upon count 22, engaging in the pattern of corrupt activity, 2923.32A1 and 2923.32B1, that's a felony of the first degree. The court will sentence you to serve a prison term of uh, eight years, and that's a mandatory term pursuant to 29, 2913F. Concerning the firearm specifications, uh, in considering those, um, those specifications, all of which the court, the jury found you guilty, the court, uh, the, the section 2929.14b1b provides that such mandatory prison terms shall not be reduced pursuant to section 2967.19, that's petition for early release. Section 2929.20, that's judicial release. Section 2967.193, that's early, that's earned days credit, or any other provision of Chapter 2967 or Chapter 5120 of the Revised Code and Statute further provides, or the, the law further provides by the judicial decree and decision that you not receive jail time credit for. Uh, uh, prison for the prison sentences imposed for the firearm specification. Uh, and finally, prison terms imposed for firearm specifications are to run consecutively to and will be uh, are to be served consecutively uh, to each other and consecutively to and prior to <coughs> prison terms imposed for the underlying offenses. The court uh, is aware that 2929. 29.14b1b uh, 29, 29 provides that except as provided in b1g of the section, the court shall not impose more than one prison term on any offender uh, under b1a <coughs> for felonies committed as part of the same act or transaction. Now there's an exception stated in 2929.14b1g. 29, that exception is that if the offender is convicted of or pleads guilty to two or more felonies, if one or more of those felonies are aggravated murder, <coughs> aggra uh, attempted aggravated murder, attempted murder, aggravated robbery, felonious assault, or rape, and if the offender is convicted or pleads guilty to a firearm specification in connection with two or more of the felonies, the sentencing court shall impose on the offender the prison term specified for the two most serious specifications of which the offender is convicted or to which the offender pleads guilty and in its discretion may also impose on the offender the prison term as specified for any or all of the remaining firearm specifications. Now based upon the way in which the Ohio Supreme Court has defined in case law same act or transaction, this court finds that the eight aggravated murders charged in counts uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 do not constitute the same act or transaction with different victims involved in all of those uh, as one of those, the reasons why, but I'm, I'm finding that they're not the same act or transaction. And the court will therefore impose a mandatory prison term upon uh, 
uh, one of the specifications stated for, or for which you've been found guilty with respect to each of those counts, and I'll get into that here in a minute, uh, and for each of those eight counts of the indictment. The court further finds that although for the purposes of sentencing, in this case, on the specifications, on the firearm specifications, the aggravated burglary charged in count 10 may constitute the same act or transaction as the aggravated murder charge in count one, which may be the same act or transaction, that the aggravated burglary charge in count 11 may constitute the same act or transaction as aggravated murder charge in count four and the aggravated murder charge in count five, based upon the victims in that residence, and the aggravated burglary charge in count 12 may constitute the same act or transaction as the aggravated murder charge in count two and the aggravated murder charge in count three, and that the aggravated burglary charge in count 13 may constitute the same act or transaction as the aggravated murder charge in count six, the aggravated murder charge in count seven, and the aggravated murder charge in count eight. Pursuant to section 2929.14b1g, the court shall impose a sentence on the most serious firearm specifications of which the defendant was convicted as to count 10, count 11, count 12, and count 13 as well. Therefore, uh, on as to specification three to count one, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count two, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count three, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count four, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count five, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count six, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count seven, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count eight, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count 10, uh, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count 11, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count 12, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification three to count 13, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years. As to specification two to count 14, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of three years, and as to count, as to specification three to count 22, the court imposes a mandatory prison term of six years, resulting in a total of mandatory prison terms of 81 years for those firearm specifications, uh, which are to be served consecutively to each other and consecutive to and prior to the prison terms imposed for the underlying uh, felonies, and also those prison terms of 81 years are not to be reduced uh, pursuant uh, to any sections of law, uh, and are um, and there's, there's no jail time credit for those uh, on those. The court also finds that consecutive service of the prison terms imposed in this case is necessary to protect the public from future crime and to publish uh, and to punish, excuse me, and to punish the defendant and that consecutive sentences are not disproportionate to the seriousness of the defendant's conduct and to the danger the defendant poses to the public. The court further finds that the defendant committed the offenses of which he has been found guilty in this action as part of one or more courses of conduct and the harm caused by all of the offenses so committed was so great and unusual that no single prison term for any of the offenses committed as part of any of the courses of conduct adequately reflects the seriousness of the defendant's conduct. The court also finds that the defendant's history of criminal conduct, although, uh, uh, as we mentioned, un undetected uh, and, and unprosecuted, but 
but referred to by the defendant in his own testimony and also in the testimony of the defendant. The defendant's history of criminal conduct demonstrates that consecutive sentences are necessary to protect the public from future crime by the defendant. The court therefore orders that the prison terms of life imprisonment without parole imposed in counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 shall be served consecutively to each other and consecutive to the prison terms imposed for the 14 firearm specification. The 8-year prison terms imposed in counts 10, 11, 12, 13, and 22 shall be served consecutively to each other and consecutively to the prison terms imposed in counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 and consecutive to the prison terms imposed on the 14 firearm specifications. The prison terms imposed in counts 9, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 shall be served concurrently with each other and concurrently with the prison terms imposed in counts 10, 11, 12, 13, and 22. The aggregate of this sentence is 8 consecutive terms of life imprisonment without parole plus 121 years, 81 years of which are mandatory and shall be served prior to the prison terms imposed for the underlying felonies cannot be reduced pursuant to law and for which there is no jail time credit. The 8 years imposed on count 22 also is a mandatory term. Now, the law provides that upon the defendant serving the prison terms, the definite prison terms, and non-life prison terms imposed in counts 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 22, those are all first degree felonies. If he is released from prison upon the serving those terms in full, the law provides that he would be released on post-release control for a mandatory period of 5 years for each of those offenses and would be supervised by the adult parole authority. And upon the defendant serving the prison terms imposed for the felonies in counts 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21, if he is released from prison upon serving those prison terms in full, it may be, he may be released upon optional post-release control for a period of up to 2 years if the parole board finds that his release on post-release control is necessary for him. Now, I'm going to advise him of the post-release control, although, of course, the overriding sentences of life left in prison without parole on the first 8 counts would make this advisement somewhat maybe unnecessary, but the law does provide that I'm to advise him of this, so I'm going to either complete the sentencing of this defendant. PRC, of course, does not apply to counts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, but if he is released on PRC, if he violates any of the terms, I should say, of PRC, post-release control, the parole board provides that the parole, the law provides that the parole board may return the defendant to prison for up to 9 months for each violation. However, the total aggregate period for which the defendant can be returned to prison by the parole board for all violations of post-release control cannot exceed one half of the prison term imposed by the court. If the defendant commits a new felony while on post-release control, then any court that sentences him on that new felony, in addition to imposing the prison term for the new felony, may impose an additional prison term for the violation of post-release control, and the maximum period of that additional prison term is one year for the time he has remaining on his post-release control period, whichever is greater, and any prison term imposed for the violation of post-release control would be imposed consecutively to any prison term imposed for the new felony committed while on post-release control. 
Again, that would apply only if the defendant was released from prison, that's my understanding, and, the, and uh, if on counts one through eight, he was not to be released from prison. Um, now, the defendant obviously has been uh, convicted of felony offenses of uh, violence. Therefore, the defendant may not uh, acquire, have, carry, or use any firearm or dangerous ordinance for the rest of his life unless he's relieved of that disability by a court of competent jurisdiction. If he does have, use, carry, or acquire a firearm or dangerous ordinance in violation of that restriction, that would constitute having weapons while under disability a felony uh, of the third degree. The court will not impose a fine uh, in, on any of these offenses. However, the court does order that the uh, court costs uh, be assessed to the uh, defendant uh, as part of the sentence. If the costs aren't paid in a timely manner or pursuant to any schedule that this court may uh, approve, uh, or the court may establish. The court can order court costs satisfied through community service work. If the court were to issue that type order, the defendant would receive credit toward the court costs in an amount that we would compute by multiplying the number of community service hours worked by a specific rate per hour that the court would set at the time the order is made. And every hour worked on community service pursuant to that order would reduce the court cost balance in the amount of that hourly rate. You do have the right, uh, Mr. Wagner, to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court. If you cannot afford the cost of an appeal, you have the right to appeal without cost. If you cannot afford, the, afford an attorney to, or cannot obtain an attorney to assist you with your appeal, you have the right to have an attorney appointed for that purpose at no cost to yourself. It's my understanding you've already filed a motion requesting that, and the court will be looking at the motion and uh, trying to, uh, and, and, well, I'm appointing you an attorney, I'm sure. Uh, if you cannot afford the documents necessary for an appeal, you have the right to have those documents provided at no cost to yourself, and you have the right to have a timely notice of appeal filed on your behalf. Now, on behalf of the state, are there any additions or corrections or anything that you wish to say with regard to the sentence just uh, imposed? No, no. All right. On behalf of the defense, is there anything further with regard to sentencing that you wish to bring up, either matters of correction or addition? Just note our objection, Your Honor, to the maximum sentence, consecutive sentences, to the denial of credit for time served and the violation of due process, and also uh, to the court of appeals. Your Honor, just one thing on that. Um, the, I think the jail time credit is. 1,492 days. I, I realize that does not get attributed uh, uh, to the yes. firearm specifications, yes. but it certainly would well, He doesn't receive on the firearm specifications. I'm glad you mentioned that. Do you have to assess the number of days there? 1,492. Mm -hmm. 1,492, I believe. I did that by, you know, The court, the court will, on, okay. on the offenses for which jail time credit is uh, Permitted, which would not, which would not include the uh, sentences imposed for the uh, uh, for the uh, firearm specifications. The court will, uh, the defendant will receive credit, jail time credit, for toward those other other sentences. And the amount does the defense feel that's a problem? That's correct? yeah, it's from the day of his arrest. I believe Through that's. all for all days spent in jail from the time of his arrest through today's day, he receives credit. And then, of course, uh, if he's held and killed, he's transported to the, to the uh, state correction facility to begin serving for his uh, prison terms. He will receive credit for that time. Thank you, Judge. And just to be clear, we object to the statute that denies him credit for time served. What's that again? We object to the statute that denies him credit for, for the For the, uh, just to be clear. Right. Thank you, Judge. Anything further? If not, then we are adjourned. Thank you.